पंकज न भय नम पंकज मलिने नम पंकज नेत्रय नमस्ते पंकज अंग्रे हेलो लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन वेलकम बैक टू एक्सोटिक एस्ट्रोलॉजी एंड टुडे वी विल कंटिन्यू विद आवर प्लेलिस्ट ऑन द भगवत गीता वी हैव मेनी वीडियोस इन दिस प्लेलिस्ट सो इफ यू हैव नॉट वॉच्ड इट प्लीज वॉच दे आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अस टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट लॉर्ड कृष्णा इज टेलिंग बिकॉज दैट्स the crux of all the scriptures okay and once we complete reading the bhagavad gita we can proceed to the shrimad bhagavatam all right so first we read the gita and then we read the shrimad bhagavatam but i have also parallelly started the playlist on shrimad bhagavatam also we will do some videos sometimes okay but today we are continuing with the queen kunti prayer so i i decided that i will put the prayers of queen kunti in the bhagavad gita playlist itself so these prayers are actually in the first canto of the shrimad bhagavatam yes i think so <laughs> all right so they are very beautiful prayers as you might have noticed in the playlist in the videos above so please go and watch it and today we will see again today is first canto 8th chapter 22nd verse okay 1.8.22 so the name is the vision of lotus so in this i will explain or we will read rather from this book that how should we see god many people say that oh i went to the temple i have seen god blah 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 this and that okay so today we will see how we should see god okay so it's very important and yes if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you have not watched the other videos or at least this playlist then please go and watch it and if you want a consultation from me then please go to my website you will find the link to the website in the description section of this video below and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who wants to know how should we see god and yes before i begin as i always say god is there with you all the time just no no don't look look to him properly <laughs> just look to him and you will find him okay there you go the vision of lotuses 1.8.22 namah pankaj nabhaya namah pankaj maline namah pankaj netraya namaste pankaj angre once more we shall recite namah pankaj nabhaya namah pankaj maline namah pankaj netraya namaste pankaj angre this is one of the very cherished verses of one of my guru maharaj of one of my gurus i mean so this verse you see there are two words very common here one is nama another is pankaj what is the meaning of pankaj yes if you don't know then watch this video and if you know then write it in the comments pankaj means lotus yes beautiful lotus pankaj is very beautiful lotus is so beautiful there's the story in mahabharat when the pandavas are in exile and draupadi sees that there is a beautiful blue lotus and she tells to bhima that oh my dear husband i want that blue lotus and bhima goes to take it and he has a fight with a particular community because that lotus was coming from the celestial regions and in that fight he kills a particular person all right so if you know who that community was and who was the person who bhima had killed then write it in the comments let me see how many of you have read the mahabharat because this story is not there in any serial or tv or any movies okay so if you have actually read the mahabharat only then you will be able to answer and if you cannot then please tell me i will write it all right so lotus is very beautiful yes draupadi was also attracted to the lotus very much so she told him that no no i want that lotus blue lotus that was a heavenly lotus but even in this bhuloka where we have different uh, where we have many lotuses i guess they are very beautiful so that is why queen kunti is telling nama pankaja nabhaya that means she is comparing uh, everything uh, to lotus yes so we will see what it is okay so the translation is as follows my respectful obeisances are unto you o lord and yes queen kunti is speaking about lord krishna here everybody knows this and who is kunti, queen kunti by the way she is the mother of the pandavas okay 
my respectful obeisances are unto you o lord whose abdomen is marked with a depression like a lotus flower nabhaya nabhaya means nabhi that nabhi is the abdomen that part is marked with a depression like a lotus flower who are always decorated with garlands of lotus flowers nama pankaj malini mala that is lotus flower whose glance is as cool as the lotus nama pankaj netraya netra means eyes and whose feet are engraved with lotuses pankaj angraya that is the meaning okay namaste pankaj angraya so there is a uh, once i was attending a ram katha where one of the speakers he was telling that see actually uh, before saying about that i will say here why why in the universe why is there the word lotus so much because what queen kunti is doing is she is comparing the most beautiful thing in this world to lord krishna's body parts so basically she is telling that you are your eyes are like lotus your Uh, the garland of flowers that is also like lotus so everything is like lotus your feet is also like lotus so whenever we speak of krishna's feet we do not just say feet we say lotus feet that is the reason okay and as i said that once i was attending a ram katha where that speaker was telling that lord ram his his feet or his lotus feet is so soft that even if sita devi touches the feet with her soft hands then there is a danger that there will be cracks in the feet of lord ram so it is so delicate and so soft and he was also telling a shloka where he was uh, me- mentioning that lord ram's face is so beautiful krishna is sham varna which means a cloud the color of the cloud when it is just supposed to rain he is of that color sham as they say sham sundar radhe sham these are names of krishna and ram lord ram was green in color his complexion was green wow beautiful blue and green my god <laughs> so lord ram it is uh, that speaker was telling that your face is as beautiful as your face <laughs> should i repeat your face you are saying oh lord ram your face is as beautiful as your face now generally we don't say like that we say oh you are as beautiful uh, suppose there is a very beautiful woman we say oh you are looking like rambha or you are looking like urvashi because they are the they are the dam- damsels of the heavenly planets so we mean to say that you are looking as good as them today but why in the universe does this shloka say that oh lord ram your face is be- as beautiful as your face because he said that there is no other object in this entire creation of lord brahma with whom you can compare the face of lord ram the beauty of his face you cannot compare it's not possible even in the brahma samhita it is there venum konantam aravinda dalaya taksham varahavatam samasitam budasundarangam lakshmi sahastra sat sambram sevyamanam गोविंदमादिपुरुषं तमहं भजामि श्यामं त्रिभंगललितं नवयोवनं च श्यामं त्रिभंगललितं त्रिभंग मीन्स थ्री फोल्ड बेंडिंग फॉर्म इफ यू सी लॉर्ड कृष्णास फॉर्म ही विल नेवर बी स्ट्रेट लॉर्ड राम इज ऑलवेज स्ट्रेट लाइक दिस इज होल्डिंग द बो एन एरो एन हीज गोइंग टू किल समबडी और सीता देवी स्टैंडिंग येस एंड लक्ष्मण इज स्टैंडिंग बट you will never see that lord krishna is standing straight you will see he's always uh, in this three fold na his legs are twisted like this then his uh, his the the middle portion is like this then his his head is also like this tribhangi he is in the tribhangi shape tribhangi means three fold bending form like this shyamam tribhanga lalitam navayovanam cha navayovanam means ever young ever youthful ever fresh okay so lord krishna was very aged when he was speaking the bhagavad gita if you know what lord krishna's age was then please write it in the comments let me see how many of you can write this ah, or you can make a calculation <laughs> krishna lived for this many years and yudhishthir maharaj ruled for this many years that means krishna's age 
minus the age, uh, minus the number of years Yudhishthira Maharaj ruled is equal to Krishna's age when he was speaking the Bhagavad Gita because as soon as Krishna left, Yudhishthira Maharaj also left to the Himalayas. He renounced his uh, kingship and all his other authoritarian positions. Okay, so uh, Nava Yovan Amcha, why this is said because it is said Krishna was looking ever youthful, ever beautiful. Yes, he was not looking like a man of that age. That is why it is said, Shrima Shyamam Tribhanga Lalitam Navayovanam Cha. Navayovanam means you are ever youthful, you are ever beautiful. Yes. Kandar Pakoti Kamaniya Vishesha Shobha. Kandar Pakoti. Kandar Pai is who? Kandar Pakoti means thousands and millions of cupids. Kandar Pai is cupid. They say cupid makes us stupid out of us. Yes, when we fall prey to the <laughs> arrows of Cupid. <laughs> if you see Cupid, he's known as Kamadev. He's the uh, he's the god of desire and sex, sex and love and romance and intimacy and all this. He's always having a chuk, bow and arrow. <laughs> and uh, whenever we see some good-looking member of the opposite sex or somebody who is very charming, then he chuk, shoots and it's like... <sighs> <laughs> it pierces our heart and that is why in movies they put a heart and then there is a arrow inside ah the heart is bleeding <laughs> okay so but the brahma samhita says now by the way what is brahma samhita i always forget to tell people are asking me you are saying from the brahma samhita but you are not telling what the Brahma Samhita is. Brahma Samhita is, of course, Brahma Samhita means Lord Brahma has spoken that. That is why it is Brahma Samhita. But the question, question is, when did he speak? Well, when he was meditating, it is the, that story is there in the Srimad Bhagavatam. That when Brahmaji was created, he got up and he, he was like, Oh my God, what's there? There's nothing I can't. There's nothing, my God. <laughs> <laughs> when he was created out of Lord Vishnu's uh, navel, then there was nothing. And then Brahma ji heard two words, no, that two syllable, tapa, 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 which means tapasya. So he started doing penance. And when he was doing, 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 doing penance, then ultimately the spiritual world was revealed where he saw the different uh, that shloka is then Devi Mahesha Haridhama Suteshu Keshu. He saw like that, na? That this is Devi Dham. This material world is under Goddess Durga's uh, jurisdiction. That is why she is known as Durga. Durga means Durg means ko, uh, it's like a they say na Durg means it's like a fort. It's like a place from where you can't go. And A means the care the caretaker the keeper. Okay, so Durga Devi is in charge of keeping the souls in maya that is why she is known as maya devi then he saw brahma ji saw devi that this is devi dham then this is mahesh dham is higher lord shiva's abode then devi mahesh hari dham hari means lord vishnu lord vishnu's dham is even higher than that he saw the vaikuntha planets and in that he saw that goloka eva nija that sloka is also there okay so basically he had seen the entire spiritual world in his divine realization inside inside himself he saw that when he was meditating so that is how the brahma samhita was compiled and but today the version of brahma samhita which we have is a very 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 tiny very small portion it was retrieved in uh, south india i guess if i am correct by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had retrieved a small portion. Somehow he got it from somewhere. So that is uh, still there. And it's so beautiful. You see, we can go and go on singing and singing for eternal, eternal time to come. So basically, what uh, is stressed in this verse is that that Kunti Devi is comparing every uh, limb of Lord Krishna to Lotus. Now, she is doing this because there is nothing else better in this world to compare Krishna's uh, body limbs with. Okay, So, now we will see how should we see God. Okay, So, when we are going to the temple, how should we start taking darshan? This is specific to that. 
the purport i will not read the entire purport i will just read whatever i feel is relevant for this shloka directly one should begin to see the lord from his lotus feet gradually rising to the thighs waist chest and face should i repeat from his feet then thighs then waist waist then chest then face one should not try to look at the face of the lord without being accustomed to seeing the lotus feet of the lord there you see that means we should whenever we go to a temple and the altar is opening the darshan opens we should not directly see his uh, face that is what is the tendency right so first we should see his lotus feet and then gradually we should go up that is what is being mentioned here shrimati kunti because of being her, being the aunt of the lord yes did not begin to see the lord from the lotus feet because the lord might feel ashamed and the kunti devi just to save a painful situation for the lord began to see the lord just above his lotus feet that is from the waist of the lord gradually rising to the face and then down to the lotus feet okay so kunti devi did not see krishna from the feet because uh, in this leela she was acting as krishna senior so krishna would be embarrassed if uh, she would see his feet and that's what is written here she began to saw from the feet uh, she saw till the face and then down to the lotus feet that means that first we should start from the feet and then we should go up to the face and then after that we should again see the feet all right in the round everything there is an there is, everything there is in order all right now comes the interesting part if one sees a lotus flower one can immediately remember krishna should i repeat if one sees a lotus flower one can immediately remember krishna for example if once if one loves one's child and one sees any of the child's garments or his shoes or a small ship or any of his playthings one will immediately remember the child yes and there was uh, somebody who was telling me that the other day that <laughs> that uh, that lady her son was of a particular ascendant so whenever she hears about that ascendant she uh, becomes very happy you know ascendant in astrology i mean because that reminds her of uh, her son yes that always happens mother and father they whenever they see things in connection to their children son or daughter then they get remembrance oh these are my child's shoes these are my child's playthings this is his garment this is the nature of love so if one actually loves god krishna one can remember him always so the million dollar question why can't we remember god always because we don't love him you see <laughs> so when we start loving god we will automatically start remembering him all the all the time it is not difficult to remember krishna here kunti devi describes krishna with reference to lotus flowers similarly when krishna describes himself in the bhagavad gita he says rasoham apsu kaunteya i am the taste of liquids rasoham apsu kaunteya prabhasmi shashi suryo yo that is the shloka i am the taste of liquids my god that means when I, when you are thirsty and you are drinking water you are getting some taste yes that taste is also krishna so one can remember krishna by tasting water my god this is like a bomb <laughs> you can even remember krishna while you are drinking water you see tasting water because krishna says i am the taste of liquids water <laughs> even if one is drinking liquor if he thinks the taste of this drink is krishna he will one day turn out to be a great saintly person my god what a statement even if one is drinking liquor if he thinks that the taste of this drink is krishna he will one day turn out to be a great saintly person which means he will eventually give up liquor <laughs> so somebody will say now the oh that means i have to drink liquor to remember krishna no no you don't have to drink you can drink even water and remember krishna but if you are drinking liquor already then also if you think then you will give up liquor and you will become a 
greatly elevated mahatma one day that is what he said here okay no twisting of words so i can request even the drunkards to become krishna conscious what to speak of others because krishna says rasoham apsu kaunteya i am the taste of the liquids generally in this context liquid is taken to mean water but liquor is also liquid it is only sugar and molasses or some other combination fermented and distilled of course it is bad because it creates intoxication although in some one sense nothing is bad liquor is bad because it creates bad effects in america there are many drunkards nowadays in india also <laughs> there is no scarcity of them but i may even uh, i may request even the drunkards when drinking wine kindly remember that the taste of this drink is krishna just begin in this way and one day you will become a saintly krishna conscious person that means you will think of krishna always so krishna is available under any circumstances if we want to catch him krishna says in bhagavad gita 10.10 तेषाम सतत युक्ता भजता प्रीतिपूर्वक ददा बुद्धि योगम तम ये नमुपयांति ते टेन चैप्टर टेन्थ वर्स ओके कृष्ण से दोज हू आर टू दोज हू आर कॉन्स्टेंटली डिवोटेड एंड हू वर्शिप मी विद लव आई गिव देम गिव देम द अंडरस्टैंडिंग बाय विच दे कैन कम टू मी इफ one is actually very serious in searching for krishna krishna is everywhere in the brahma samhita 5.35 it is said anandasta paramo chantama stham govinda madi purusham tamaham bhajami krishna is present within the universe within our hearts and even within the atom my god so it is not difficult to find him but how but one must know the process by which to do so all right so this is this long purport so i will not read uh, more from here due to the interest of time but the essence is very simple that if we want to actually find god we can we can be conscious of him 24 hours when we are drinking water when we are when we are breathing actually there was a yogi who once told that even uh, even when you are breathing you can become more and more spiritual by breathing my god oh okay that means we have to do some pranayam na anulom vinom pranayam or uh, uh, this what this na kapal bhati pranayam bhastrika pranayam there are so many kinds of pranayams we need to do pranayam only then we can be conscious of god no you don't have to do any pranayam to become conscious of god what he was meaning here is that when you are breathing that time you can think that oh only because god is providing me with oxygen i am able to breathe otherwise i cannot breathe i am dead i am finished i i will be extinguished so if god would not provide oxygen then there's no way i can be alive so you are telling that when you are breathing which you are doing every moment because if you are not breathing you are dead actually then you become more and more god conscious he was telling that okay so basically we in this video we discussed how we should take darshan how when we are going to a temple how we should see god that first we should start from his feet and then go to his face and then come down and we saw the description of lord krishna's beauty how every limb of his body is compared to lotus because that's the best thing in this world with which you can compare lord krishna's uh body or his body parts there's nothing better than that and lord ram his face is as beautiful as his face all right and krishna's color is sham the cloud which is about to rain and lord ram is green in color <laughs> okay so that is it from my side next video next time and now um, we will be posting i'll be posting videos on gita very frequently and on the shrimad bhagavatam also okay So if you are new to the channel and if you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you like this video then click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who is interested in knowing how to take darshan of god all right and if you want a consultation from me then please go to my website you will find the link to the website in the description section of this video below okay until next time god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him bye bye see you Thank you.
Yeah.